the Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session. I'm called Mr. Mbuo Tebjo Duplex, Electrical Power System teacher. Today we shall work on the subject intitulated Automatic Machine Control, but we focus on the part of machine control for the student of Opatit Electrical Power System teacher system. Let's start with the general presentation of our syllabus or our program. In this part machine control, we shall have five topics known as automatic system of production, which is the first topic, second topic, graph set, the third, sequencer, the fourth, programming and the fifth, microprocessor and microcontroller. Let's look at how the first topic will look. In the first topic, we shall have four lessons, uh, two lessons, sorry, known as generality on automatic system of production, and the second, known as feedback control system. The, sec the second topic graph said we shall have five lessons. The first lesson being generality on graph set. The second, graph set with single sequence and graph set with multi sequence. The third, graph set with stay repeating and graph set with stage jumping. The fourth, temporization and the last, the fifth lesson will be on equation of a graph set. Then move to the topic three, which is sequencer. On sequencer, we shall have generality on sequencer. We shall have the electrical sequencer, also known as the RH sequencer. We shall also have the electronic sequencer, also known as TXT2 sequencer. And then finally, we shall have the pneumatic sequencer. Let's move to the topic four, which is a programmable logic controller. Here we shall have equally have five lessons. The first lesson will be on generality on programmable logic controller, abbreviated as PLC. The second lesson being on programming using TXX21 program. The, the third one being programming using SSC 100 AB PLC, also known as Alarm Valley program. The fourth be on programming using PB100 PLC, also known as Melin Jiren program. And then the fifth and the last lesson for this topic will be on programming using TSX24-47 PLC. Then the last topic, microprocessor and microcontroller. Here we shall have two, two lessons. The first lesson on microprocessor and the second lesson on microcontroller. Let's move to the general objective of this subject. At the end of this course, each of us, each learner should be able to answer this following question or should be able to come out with this following question. You should be able to analyze any given system. You should also be equal, able to explain the operation of different technology of command. The learner should also be able to conceive a control system to, for a particular task. And then each of us should be able to realize 
and may or maintain a control system. Let's move to the pre-knowledge. What do we need or what is a student is expecting to know before moving into this subject? We all know we saw starting method in lower set. A student should master all the different starting methods for electrical machine before starting this subject. A student should also have an idea about the notion on protection of control application. Let's move to the presentation of number of or the topic one. For topic one, which is automatic system of production, here we have two presentations. The first presentation being on generality of automatic system of production. And then the second presentation will be on feedback control system. Let's move to the lesson one. Before starting the lesson one, we should know that lesson one will be on generality of automatic system of production. In this our day, we are no more using the manual system as usual. Today, before doing anything or in a company, we are trying to minimize the impact or the need of the human beings for any task that can have a risk. So to reduce the participation or the impact of the human being physically, we are moving into the automated system in order to reduce the presence of the human being and to reduce the risk that any human being can be taking while doing any, any tax. So for this reason, that's why we are having this lesson one, which is automatic system of production. The lesson one, the plan will be looking as follow. We have the objective, the problem statement, the teaching activity, the application exercise, and the assignment. Let's move directly to the problem statement. As I previously said, in terms of control, we started with the manual control, where the man was at the center of the action. Then we move to the semi-automatic control, where the intervention of the man is partial. Because when we talk of semi-automatic, uh, semi you have a human being that will do one part and the machine will do the other part. Then, to minimize the action of a man, we came out with what we call an automated system, where we are moving to 100% of action doing by the machine. So at that moment, the man is only focused in front of the machine and the risk that any human being could be taken is reduced close to, to zero. So at the end of this lesson, each of us should be able to answer this following question. What makes this command to be automatic? How does this control unit work? Let's move to the introduction. An automated system of production relies on computer control system to run and manage production process. The machine and the technology are interconnected and managed by this control system. The presentation of the control system. Here you shall see that the installation of a control system depends on two factors. The first factor is the system itself and the second is the electric motor used to control the system and also it can depend on the different components forming the system unit or the control unit of the, of the motor. So I repeat, we say the control system depends on two factors, the system itself and the motor that we are using for that particular system. And then here we are presenting the... Here we can see the, the structure of a control unit. We see that our control unit will have four, four main parts or four main components. The first component being the panel, panel board. The second being the control. The third component being the operative part. And all those ones will come to function with this fourth component, which is a, a machine. And here we can see that at the level of the panel board, you see the human, call it the operator. At the level of the control, it's designed by the operator. 
and then you have an operative part which is a main part of the control will be giving the information or the signal to the machine which is the fourth component of our control unit let's try and describe ghibli those four components or those four parts but we will focus on the three main parts due to the fact that the machine all of us have studied already an electrical machine in lower seat so let's move to the description of the panel board the panel board permits the control and the observation of the system from a central point that's why i say a panel board is at the level of the computer and is manipulated by a human being an operator may give information from the panel board and monitor the entire operation of the whole system meaning what at the level of the panel board that's what we are sending the input that's where we are sending what we are asking the machine to do and after giving the input we are able to observe how the machine will react to the, our input how do be the feedback of our input from there we can know if the system is functioning properly or or not then we say some of these components can be the sensor, the signal lamp, and others. We all know that, for example, when we take an example of the fridge, where we have a thermostat, for example, it's a sensor that we take the temperature and give to the thermostat in order to switch off or on the, the freeze. Let's move to the description of the second part, which is the control part. The behavior of the control part may be described by the way the output variable depends on the input variable, which is necessarily different for various types of system. And some of these components are some of the control part can be the push button, the limit switch. And we know that the limit switch and the push button are all what we call a, 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 a what we call um, in electric in machine the start push button and the push button for the push button but for the limit switch we have done it when we are doing uh, a wiring system or start your electrical machine with forward and reverse let's move to the third component which is the description of the operative part the component of this part must be must execute instruction from the central for the control center. The component of this part must execute instruction for from the control center and then supply power to the machine. Let's take an example when we are at the level of our computer. We are having a keyboard where we can input our information. And then we are having the CPU, what we call central processing unit, which is executing the tax given by us and then forwarding back the response to us where we can monitor on the screen so this is functioning in the same way meaning what at the level of the uh, panel board the operator can enter his input you can give your information then at the level of the operative part he will execute your input and forward the input to the machine in order for the machine to perform the particular tasks that were that were asked and some of these components can be the isolator, the fuse, and the thermal relay. Let's move to the operative part of automated system of control, automated system of production. The operative mode is the latitude given to an operator to control a, a system. The selection of the system is done in function of the first, the type of work to be carried out. We, before choosing any system, we should first of all know why and for which purpose we are choosing that system. Because each task must have a different system to be carried out. Why that of the motor is done in function of the type of load and its power. The cycle of operation of the mode of operation. To try to summarize, each time we are having a system, before choosing that system, we will have to ask ourselves those following questions. What will be the specificity or which task do we, do we need this system to perform? After having the task, 
what will be the load that maybe the system could be able to carry from point A to point B. And we all know that according to the load and also according to the speed, we can choose now a, an appropriate starting method and also an appropriate motor. Let's move, as we previously said in our introduction, we say we are having moving from manual control to the semi-automatic control and later on to the automatic control. So looking at the manual control, we are saying that this mode depends on the operator who manually activates the control organ to put on the system. As we say for the manual control, it depends 100% of the human being. For example, we can have when you want to put on or off the light using a one-way switch. You press on the one-way switch and then when you want to off, you press on the one-way switch to off. So that one is 100% manual. We equally have what we call semi-automatic control. This mode allows the intervention of an operator only at certain instant of the control. And we have finally the one we are moving in today is the automatic control. This mode of control does not need the intervention of human being. The control is assured by component, which send data in a way that the system work in an automatic manner. If you want to take an example of an automatic control, you can see, for example, when we are at the level of the traffic light, when you have the, the car is stopping, nobody is there to press for the light to move maybe from the green to the yellow, no, or from the green to the red. We have already, it's a program, so the system will operate automatically according to the input that was programmed before. So that's why we talk about no need of human being. Then then move to the type of control system. We should not, we should not make the confusion between the type of control system and the type of operating mode, where we say you have manual, semi-automatic, and automatic. Here we are talking about the type of control system. We have two types of control system commonly used, known as the open loop and the closed loop system. Looking at the open loop system, this system is termed direct because output is directly in function of the input. The output signal can vary only if the input signal varies. And here, this is an illustration of this is an illustration of the feedback control, open loop feedback control system or the open loop control system. We are having the input, we are having a transfer function. And this transfer function, we all, that is what we defined previously as the control unit. And we have already seen the different component or the different part of that control unit. And then we are having the output signal. And here for an open loop control system, we are saying that the output will depend only of, from the input. So uh, as the input vary, the output must vary automatically. And an example of an example of open loop control system is the washing machine, a time-based traffic light system. Let's move to the closed loop control system. The output is in function of the input and the output himself. In this system, the feedback signal coming from the output permit the correction in order to obtain the desired output. Let's look closely at the block diagram of an closed loop control system. We are seeing here we are having an input. We are having our control unit here, as we can see, and we are having our output signal. We are seeing that there is a feedback. The output is sending a feedback to the corrector fashion. Means what? If we have given an input and we are expecting a specific output, when that output is not obtained, the system will be sending back the output that it has in order for the correction factor to correct it and send back a new input. See, we obtain the expecting result. That's why we call it an closed loop system because it's functioned as a closed system. 
So an example of a closed loop system is the thermostat. We all know that the thermostat, when the sensor will take a temperature and send to him, will either switch off or on the system. And remark, closed loop system is a representative of all automated system. Let's move to the actuator. Before doing any control system, we should know that actuator is an important part of the control system. And when we'll be moving gradually into our, this topic, we will better understand. But at this level, when we are talking about the actuator, we should know that an actuator is a part of a device. It's a part of a device or machine that helps it to achieve physical, mo physical movement by converting electrical or pneumatic energy into mechanical energy. An example of actuator can be the cylinder, an electromagnet, and an electric motor. Then let's move to the control organ of our automated system of production. There are organs which receive information and supply the actuator which require energy. An example of a control organ can be the contactor or an electric valve. Then let's look at the level of the sensor. We say a sensor is a device that detects and responds to some type of input from the physical environment. The input can be the light, the heat, the motion, the moisture, the pressure, and others. Their control may be manual, so the sensor can be controlled manually. For example, you have the push button or the switches. For example, you have the push button or the switches. At the level of the switches or the push button, we all know that to put on or off, you need an action for human being. That's why we say those sensors are manual. Then we can equally have, it can equally be mechanical, where we can have the limit switches, the float switch. At this level, we know the limit switch or the float switch is not pressing by us, no. When a system functions, if it's forward and reverse, when we reach the end of the forward movement, we know that the limit switch will cut automa automatically and we go back to the reverse movement. That's why we say it can be mechanical. Then it can also be physical. At this level, we have pressure switches or temperature switches. Let's look at some, import, some useful symbols for automatic control system or for an automated system of production. Those are some of the symbols that will be frequently in front of, and we should be able to identify those symbol. So those are some of the symbols. Here we are having the quantity or the name. You are having the symbol. For example, here we are having the first element, which is the temperature. We all know the symbol of a temperature. We are also having the speed of rotation. We all know the symbol. We are having the vertical acceleration. We all know the symbol. We equally have the pressure, which the bar is the unit, and then this is the symbol. You have the linear speed. This is the unit, and this is the symbol. We equally have the fluid level. This is the unit, and this is equally the, the symbol. Let's move to the next symbol, where we are having symbol of some useful organ. Here yeah, we equally have the name or the organ, the symbol. We are having the general symbol of mechanical control. This is it. We can all see. We are having the level control. This is the symbol. We are having the control by pulling, where the symbol is indicated here. We are having control by electrical motor, where the control is indicated here. And we are having the mechanical interior, where this is the symbol. We are all used to see this symbol during our drawing of power diagram of starting metal without knowing the name. We are also having the brake, where this is the symbol. 
you are having the pedal control when the fingerboard is there the limit switch normally close the control pushing control by pushing mechanical limit control block blocking device motor wish motor weight brake feet yes Let's look at the continuation of those symbols. Here we are having the other symbols where we are having the switch normally open contact. We are having the isolator. We are having the fuse isolator, the discontactor, the stop push button. So the contact close by the limit switch normally open. So we can let me zoom to that such a way you can easily observe then we move to the next which is contactor by pulling as we have always said then move directly to the application exercise let's draw the symbol of the temperature detector the fluid detector the rotational speed detector and the pressure detector. And second question, give three mechanical characteristics of a micro contact. And B, give three electrical characteristics of a micro contact. Let's move to the solution. The first was to give the temperature detector. This is a symbol for the temperature detector. That was the first. The symbol of the temperature detector, this is it. The second layer, we have the symbol of the fluid detector. The symbol is given here. Also, we are asked to give the symbol of the rotational detector and the pressure detector used for the pressure. So those are the four symbols asked in question one. The temperature detector, the fluid detector, rotational detector, and pressure. Then, secondly, we have to give the characteristic. So, second, we have to give the mecha three mechanical characteristics and three electrical characteristics. So, the question A was to give the three mechanical characteristics. The three mechanical characteristics are the precision, the commanding force, and the endurance. The three characteristics are the precision, the commanding force, and the endurance. And the three electrical characteristics are the utilization voltage, the current, and the, the power. Let's move to the assignment. Assignment identify the following control organ. You have five organs here, or five symbols, where you are to identify and give their, their name. We have organ A, organ B, C, D, and E. So we are asked to identify them by giving their, their name. So to learn more about this lesson, we can equally consult automatic control of electrical machine, FECAR series, or you can equally consult electrical diagram and industrial automated third edition. Our next lesson shall be on feedback control system. Manetambia niña ne injubia yen.